Thank you to Bobby and Meredith for, and the McCracken County Library for letting um, our program with the McCracken County Extension Service in horticulture share uh, knowledge with the other people in McCracken County and the area. I have taught this class in landscape drawing in person at our office and the classes are free and they're multiple episodes. But today I thought I might just bring one basic uh, type of drawing uh, idea to the viewers and that way they can learn maybe just the basics and I'll be glad to follow up as needed because with landscape drawing where we learned a drawing perspective it's possible for anyone that really wants to draw any building that they look at or have a photograph of it takes just some basic tools okay so uh, if you want to advance the slide okay so um i'm kathy wimberly my real name is catherine so i have to sign catherine a lot of times but um I was born as an artist, it runs in my family, but I never felt like I could make a living as an artist. I always did it for fun and, and some for profit. Uh, and I was working on my degree in art uh, early on and uh, I learned the techniques of drawing and perspective when I was 18 at University of Tennessee at Martin. And I've used these techniques all my life. It's been one of the most uh, profitable types of art I've learned from. So um, I did go ahead and get uh, a degree in art uh, and also a degree in horticulture from Murray State University. And while I was there, also earned my master's at Murray State. I've taught at a private school for art uh, over the years. And uh, this is one of the classes I've taught about drawing in perspective. But I always felt like I was gonna for sure get, make my living as a, a, the scientist part of me because when I was teaching classes in art, nobody would ask about uh, the painting on the wall. They wanted to know about the shrub in their yard. Also enjoy the science of horticulture because everything is measured. Everybody agrees that like, yes, that shrub looks bad or yes, that tree looks really good. Whereas in art, it's so much an idea of emotions and uh, imagination that play a role in preferences. So I like things to be uh, where you can strictly measure them. Uh, and I use the art for now for recreational purposes more than anything. So if you wanna advance the slide. So the idea of drawing in perspective, this is just a clip art uh, drawing from the internet, but uh, this was one way I could show you easily what it looks like to draw in perspective. It's more likely when you're gonna be drawing buildings in the landscape and adding in plants to enhance the landscape. So we're gonna learn how to draw in perspective. Uh, next. Okay, this is an idea, this is a painting I did that's a still life. Uh, you don't necessarily have to know much about how to draw in perspective because when you, this was from a, a live event where I had the apples in the bowl on the table and painted what I saw. So there's not really a lot of need for knowing how to do perspective in a painting like this or a drawing like this. So the, um, this is a watercolor and it's under glass so there's some reflection off the glass. Uh, but perspective is gained by capturing what was actually seen there at the vantage point that I had where I was standing. And there's no need for the uh, imaginary objects that we're gonna use today called vanishing points. And we're gonna learn about those coming up. Okay, next. So what is drawing in perspective? It's pretty much gonna be taking the idea where you can create the illusion of a three-dimensional object that's like a building on a piece of paper that's two-dimensional. And there are building blocks to do this drawing in perspective and you're gonna learn about those today. The elements that we're gonna learn about will be the horizon line that we'll be placing on the paper and vanishing point or vanishing points. There's two kinds of perspective we'll be learning about. And then we have invisible lines. When we stand outside and look at a building, there are invisible lines in nature that help us to be able to understand what we're looking at. And those imaginary lines are called orthogonals. And we're gonna learn more about what that means. Okay, next. Okay, this is a, a photograph downtown city street. 
And this is the idea of what one point perspective looks like. Uh, we're, one point perspective is, I think, the easier one to be able to draw and come out with success. Um, but you'll learn enough about two point perspective to get the basic ideas of how to do that. But this is one point perspective where there's down at the end of the street, there's an imaginary point that we call the vanishing point where all the lines that are imaginary lines, not really lines that are seen that are orthogonals that take the viewer's eye to that vanishing point. Now you can see the lines in the sidewalk particularly they are uh, physical lines that you see in the picture and they are going back to the vanishing point. So this is the idea of one point perspective and then we're gonna learn about two point perspective. That's a bit more complicated. So uh, next please. Okay, so this is a building from clip art that is two dimensional. Uh, has two points for the vanishing points for, for drawing in perspective. But we're gonna go learn about the one point first. So you won't, but I want you to know that they're uh, how to do the two point later on. Okay, so next. So what are the basic things you're gonna need? This is a really uh, inexpensive type of art if you ask me just to learn the basics. Uh, it's nice to have a large piece of plain drawing paper uh, the bigger the better, and uh, a number two pencil, that's just a common writing pencil. A white eraser is helpful to be able to take the lines off the paper when you're finished because some of the lines are gonna go away. A white eraser will take away the graphite on the paper without leaving a red smudge. And then a pencil sharpener is handy to have to keep the pencil sharp. We use a lot of the pencil and it really does need to be sharpened frequently. A straight edge could be just a, a ruler or sometimes I just get a piece of cardboard that's long enough that uh, is, has a straight edge on it. Uh, a yardstick is real handy to have because we're gonna need to make some really long lines in some cases. Okay, so the, the basic things are, are not real expensive, I hope, for you to be able to start out with. Okay, next. So the goal today is gonna to be, maybe you get to learn something new and then strictly for enjoyment. It's really just a lot of fun to me to be able to sit down and start with a blank piece of paper and a ruler and a pencil and end up with, um, with a nice drawing. Because this is all drawing with straight lines. Okay, next. So we're gonna to need to go over some definitions just so you'll know what I'm talking about. And you'll hear these definitions repeated through the presentation. But the idea that we're gonna to need to learn about is the horizon. And you might already know what a horizon is. You might already know about parallel lines, but we're gonna to need to know exactly what parallel lines are, what perpendicular lines are, what a vanishing point is, or two vanishing points, how they're gonna work on the paper. Then those orthogonal lines, the single line would be called one orthogonal, but if you had two or more, they'd be orthogonals. And those are imaginary lines, but we're gonna draw them on the paper and then erase them to help you be able to build your uh, cityscape or your farm buildings, whatever you wanna draw this uh, in the, in the landscape. So um, we're going to learn about the one point perspective first and then later two point perspective. Okay, next. So this is outdoors and if you think about sometimes you're in a wide open space and you can see far off the horizon and the horizon is the place where the sky and the earth meet. So that's the idea of horizon. Okay, next. Okay, then I, I took the same picture and I drew a line, an arrow showing where the horizon is, where the earth and sky meet. Okay, next. Parallel lines. The idea that lines are parallel, you might have learned this in math in, in a elementary school or middle school. Uh, the parallel lines in real world, they will never meet. They will never cross each other. So uh, many times we're gonna be drawing lines in our landscape drawing that are 
parallel. The example of this, this is at Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville. If you ever get a chance to go to drive through a, a place that you want to just look at the landscape and it's easy to get to, Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville is a beautiful place to drive. It's very large. And it's on a, a knob right there in Louisville. So this, uh, this little um, garden building with the columns, the columns are parallel lines. Next. Okay, perpendicular lines. And we learned about this maybe in, in also uh, geometry in, in grade school, high school. Uh, perpendicular lines are going to be lines that join at 90 degrees. And the example of what we mean by 90 degrees is like a square. Every corner in a square is a 90 degree turn, a 90 degree angle. So we're going to have a perpendicular line. It's very important to keep our lines that are going up and down totally perpendicular to the horizon lines. Okay, next. Now we're going to learn about vanishing points and maybe this will be a way for you to grasp the idea about vanishing points. We already saw the city street that was a photograph. Well, this is a clip art drawing, but I wanted to show you that this has, has a, a vanishing point at the, in the distance where the lines of the buildings in nature appear to merge in the distance. So this one's going to have one vanishing point. Okay, next. Okay. So here's where the orth orthogonals come in. And I drew these in as red lines so you can see them easier. But they are imaginary lines. But if you're outside and you really look and you could take a, a yardstick with you or a long uh, stick, something's very straight, you can actually line up where you're standing and looking at buildings. You can line up the orthogonal lines. The, as you can see in this building, the, the sidewalk has a line that disappears to the back corner. Uh, it's drawn in with that red line. The upper buildings on the right all follow the upper red orthogonal line and the, the uh, foundation of the buildings follows the orthogonal line on the lower right. So those all vanish into one point and that makes it be one point perspective. Okay, next. <clears throat> Again, another city street. This was in uh, Sacramento, California. Uh, you can just see the buildings there in front of you and all of the lines, and maybe you can already guess, you can figure out that the lines are gonna vanish into one point. So next. Okay, I drew in the blue line as the horizon line. And uh, usually the horizon line when we're outdoors is about at eye level. And then I've drawn in the orthogonals, those imaginary lines that you can actually see on the right, the lines of the walls and the floors of the buildings follow down to that one vanishing point. The sidewalk, the crosswalk line, Follow us to that vanishing point. <clears throat> so there again, one point perspective with the orthogonals, those imaginary lines drawn in. And they're going to vanish to one point, and that point is going to be at the horizon in this case. Okay, next. This is the idea of two point perspective. Now we're, we're stepping up a notch. Two point perspective has a whole lot more. Uh, um, steps to it than the one point perspective. But this was from clip art and I wanted to show you that this has two vanishing points to draw this building. Okay, next. Here's where I've drawn in the red orthogonal lines. Remember those are imaginary lines, but they're going to take the lines of the building down to the vanishing point. And the vanishing point is on the horizon. So on the left and the lower left, you can see VP, that's the vanishing point. And those lines of that building fall down to that vanishing point. The lines on the right, on the orthogonals, they're going to a vanishing point that is far off of the picture. The, this was easy to show you the differences in if you have a vanishing point that's close to the center of the picture versus one that's far away. When we're outdoors, most of the time the vanishing points are very far away and they're mostly 
uh, going to be two points in the perspective. So I hope you can understand the idea that we're going to draw in the horizon line on the paper first, and then we're going to choose the corner of the building that's closest to us, which would be that left mo the left column there that's vertical before it turns the corner goes back. That's the one that's closest to us. That would be the first one to be drawn in. <clears throat> so we're going to draw that line above and below the horizon. Then we're going to work on doing the orthogonals. Okay, next. Okay, there again, the horizon where the earth and sky meet. That's the most important line to start out with. And it's always drawn where it is parallel to the base of the paper. <coughs> Excuse me, next. <clears throat> okay, one point perspective. We just have that one vanishing point. Okay, it's next. Okay, this is going to show you how one point perspective works. You're going to draw in the horizon and the sky is above and the earth is below. Okay, so the horizon line is important. It's always the one we start out with. The horizon should be drawn uh, just a little bit off center for more pleasing to the eye. Okay, next. The one point perspective, we're going to draw in the vanishing point uh, in the close to the center. It's going to be just an, an X and all the lines are all the orthogonals are going to go to that one vanishing point. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, and all this is going to be in your pencil drawing. I'm using color today to help you be able to see the different lines I'm putting in. Sky is above the horizon and earth is below the horizon. Okay, next. Okay, we're going to start drawing in the lines and this is um just to have something show you how the vanishing point works, these lines are going to go to the vanishing point and they're on the earth. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> um, this is the one vanishing point. Sorry, my throat's messed up. <clears throat> the lines are, are getting closer together as they go toward the horizon. It's going to give you the appearance of depth with one vanishing point. And I drew in some uh, scattered lines for the landscape. Okay, here's the orthogonal lines. They are imaginary lines, but they're going to show you how this, these lines work to escape into the, <clears throat> the vanishing point. The trees on the right are drawn in perspective so that the height follows the, uh, or an imaginary orthogonal line. But this is an idea that you can create easily to draw a one point perspective drawing. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> um, and if you were outdoors and you're looking at a big building and you're standing right in front of it, you're most, most likely going to have one vanishing point. You can see that the lines of this building go to the vanishing point that's on the horizon. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Those are imaginary lines, but if you were standing outside in front of the building, you could have a, like a long stick, a yard stick, some straight edge to hold in front of you and line up all of those lines and figure out where the vanishing point is. And the vanishing point is going to be on the horizon. <clears throat> Next. Okay, two point perspectives, a little bit more to it than that. Okay, thank you. Next. <clears throat> we're going to get a piece of paper, we're going to draw in a horizontal line that's parallel to the base of the paper. You're going to put a vanishing point, there's an X on the left and an X on the right, <coughs> on the horizon. <clears throat> Next. <laughs> okay, so this is what you're going to see. You're going to see the sky above the horizon, the earth below the horizon, and you're going to have the two vanishing points at a point that's chosen by the artist. And there again, I'm using color to help you to understand the process of doing this. But you can do all this in just, just a regular pencil. Next. <clears throat> okay, now this is the idea of uh, the first line that's drawn on the horizon. It's going to be a vertical line that's going to represent the corner of the building that's to be drawn. And the corner of the building. The first vertical line is always chosen as the uh, corner that's closest to the artist. Next. 
<clears throat> okay, now this is where we get to use those orthogonals. And this is where you're gonna have to come up with the idea that these are imaginary lines, but you're gonna use a straight edge to draw to the, to the vanishing points. This vertical line that we drew as the corner of the building is gonna help us to put in all the lines we're gonna need for drawing in a basic uh, cube structure just like a, a little a garden shed would be. So let's put in the, at the top of that blue line, which is gonna be in pencil when you draw it, but uh, the top part of that line is gonna need a, an orthogonal that goes down to the vanishing point on the right and down to the vanishing point on the left. The bottom part of that line is gonna need a, an orthogonal that goes up to the vanishing point on the left and up to the vanishing point on the right. So always keep in mind, when you draw in a wall of a building in the drawing, that any point of that building that is above the horizon has orthogonals that go down to the vanishing point. Any point that's below the horizon of the building, where the building is, any point that you start to draw, if the point is below the horizon, the orthogonals go up. So sometimes it gets to be real complicated, but we're gonna draw a real simple building today so you can follow through with this. Skies is above, the earth is below, and horizon's that main line across. And we always keep that, that first corner of the building, that first line we draw this vertical, it's always perpendicular to the horizon. Okay, next. Okay, so we're gonna take the, use those orthogonals to help us build the rest of the walls in. So we're gonna add the two vertical lines. <clears throat> and this is where the artist gets to use their, their idea of how big the building is to put those lines in. <clears throat> Next. <coughs> we're gonna use the orthogonals to draw the lines that are the base of the building. They're gonna follow that, those orthogonal lines. No new lines are built vertically. They're all gonna follow the orthogonals. Okay, next. <clears throat> You're gonna erase the, the horizon line. Keep all the drawing lines that you've put in. <clears throat> next. You're gonna find the center of either side of the, this uh, cube that you're drawing. And you can always find the center of any surface by connecting the corners with straight lines. So we're, what we're gonna do is make a diagonal line across from one corner to the other and use the other corners to cross. So you're gonna end up with an X in this case. And the center of that X is gonna be the exact center of that wall. So that's gonna help you to be able to build a building that's gonna look uh, correct in when you're finished, okay? So you learn how to draw an X. So it can be used on either wall, but I'm gonna show you how to do it on this side right now. Okay, next. Okay, we're gonna take and make a vertical line. Remember, vertical lines are always perpendicular to the horizon. We're gonna take it from the center of that X and go up. Now, this is where the artist gets to use their imagination of how tall they want this to go. This is gonna, what we're doing now is building a gable end on the end of this little shed. And the, that's what we're gonna use to make the roof. If the straight line is the example of a, what a ridge pole would be like in a, a real building. Okay, so next, we're gonna draw on an orthogonal. Remember the top of that line is above the horizon. So we're going to go down with our orthogonal to the vanishing point. And you can see that all these lines are, they keep using the X of that vanishing point, the exact center of that X. It's very important to have a very specific point to use for a vanishing point. You don't want your vanishing point to be here and there. It's gotta be one specific spot. Sometimes in the past, I've actually used a, um, something like a pen to make a hole in the paper so that I'm actually drawing to exactly one spot every time. And there again, all these lines are, we're still using just a straight edge for all these lines. Okay, so we've got some orthogonals. And then what we're gonna do with them next is the, but we'll see the next slide, please. 
Okay, we're going to make the gable of the roof by just connecting that top of that ridge pole, which is that vertical line from the X. We're just going to draw a blue line. Well, you'll use a pencil, but the blue lines are showing what the end of the roof is going to look like. Okay. So I hope you have that idea. Next, that's how we're going to make that wall. And then next, just okay. Now we're, this is where the idea of a parallel line comes in. The parallel line is going to be parallel to the line you drew to make that uh, line of the ridge pole connect to the to the wall itself. So that's the idea where we need to know how what a parallel line is. Okay, next. Now we're going to just use, this is when that white eraser comes in handy because we're going to use a lot of erasing. The We remove that X and the ridge pole part of the building. So it's starting to look like a building on the horizon. And it's, um, the lines kind of messed up when I was copy and pasting the, they should really fall exactly on the red orthogonal. Okay, next. So this is the building without the orthogonals. Uh, it's drawn in perspective. The, the base of the uh, left side of the wall is a little bit off because it just got shifted in copy and paste methods. But it, it would follow a little bit better on that orthogonal line, please, when you do it. But you can see that there's the horizon and sky is above and earth is below. And uh, we've erased the orthogonals. So the next slide. You can just take a, if you're drawing this on the computer, you can just take the cloud shape from insert shapes. There's a cloud that I just take it and, and stretch it around, use it all different ways to make it look like shrubs and trees. And then you can use the fill uh, tool to fill it in with it, various shades of green. So that, that's the way I can quickly make trees and shrubs. Uh, the idea when I teach this is a horticulture class, I can teach people what kind of trees and shrubs would work nicely in this kind of setting? And also, I could teach you about the difference between deciduous shrubs and evergreen shrubs. In this case, this shape would indicate that these are deciduous trees or shrubs. So that's where we get to add the horticulture part into the landscape drawing. Okay, next. So it's pretty easy to take the squiggly line tool in the um, toolbar area of your computer and just make a shape and once it connects it, you can fill it in with a color and it's fun to be just haphazard enjoy making doodly like uh, you know just uh carefree shapes it's going to give you the impression of a of a horizon with trees and shrubs so um there again it's just uh whatever you like you could draw this on paper and and not have to worry about trying to find a, uh, the tool on the computer to do it Next, okay, we're going to add a curved road and uh, curved lines are more pleasing to the eye than straight lines uh, in and this is like a rural setting. So uh, if you have the the road where it looks like it's a little bit wider at the where it's close to you, it gets narrow in the distance. That's going to give the impression of depth, uh, give the idea of three dimensions on a two dimensional surface. Okay, next. So now you get to add some color if you want to, or you can just shade it with your black and white, I mean, just the black graphite of the pencil. Uh, um, in this case, the light is coming from the right. So the left side of the building is in shadows. So it's gonna give you some more dimension, but it's uh, more doodling involved with it. And you can add in a door if you want to, and windows, they're also gonna follow the lines using the orthogonal method. And they're going to go to the vanishing points. So that's the that would be the next class I would teach you about would be how to add doors and windows to the structure. But you've gotten the basic ideas. Uh, we had to when I was taking art classes, we had to draw a cube over and over and over. I think we must have drawn it twelve times before we were allowed to go to the next step. So I've given you about. Uh, three weeks of classes probably just in one short session here. I'd be glad to help you learn more about drawing in perspective. You can reach me uh, through my email address and I'll be glad to give you that in a few minutes. Okay, so um, this is the idea of a basic two point perspective drawing.
We're going to look at some ideas in nature. Okay, next. <clears throat> okay, this is looking at the uh, building. I think this might be the Supreme Court building. I can't really remember. But uh, you look at this building and you might ask yourself, is this one point perspective or two point perspective? Because today, if you've had time to absorb what we've been talking about, you might have grasped the idea that this is two point perspective. So next. These are the orthogonal lines. This is a real building in real time. Well, I took the picture, you know. So um, it's, it's a real uh, thing, not from a drawing. And you can see that you can follow the lines with nature. If you have a, a long stick or yard stick, very straight stick, you could line them up. These red lines are the orthogonals. On the left, the vanishing point is kind of closer together because uh, you can see those lines are going to converge on the horizon. Uh, I didn't draw in the horizon. It's going to be just below the base of the statue, pretty much. But um, the lines are converged at the left vanishing point on the left side, and on the right, there's a vanishing point. This closer to the center of the picture, you can see how steep the lines are going down to the horizon on the right. So when the orthogonal lines are very steep, then you know that the vanishing point's closer to the center. Okay. So the artist has the choice of placing those vanishing points however they want to, but know that in real life, there are vanishing points when you're outdoors looking at the surroundings and there, there is a horizon. Okay, next. So it's possible to draw any building. It takes a lot, a lot of steps to be able to add on uh, different uh, aspects of the buildings. I'd be glad to teach you step by step if you want to learn more. But today, the, we're just doing the basics so that you don't get too much uh, information at once. And it's good to learn it just a little bit of a time. Practice drawing a cube or drawing a railroad track. Is Railroad track's a good one-point perspective or a, a road in the desert vanishing to the horizon is a good idea for one-point perspective. And then two-point perspective would be like where you're drawing a cube or a garden shed. Okay, next. So two-point perspective is more common when you're uh, walking around outdoors. Uh, you want to have two vanishing points on your horizon. So the first thing you'll do is get your paper, then you make a horizon line that's totally parallel to the base of the paper. You have to do that by measuring, make sure it's accurate. You're going to place an X on the horizon and the one on the extreme left and one on the extreme right, the farther you can get your uh, vanishing points apart, the more natural the building will probably look. And these X's are the vanishing points. And remember, the first wall to draw on the paper is the corner. And it's a vertical line. It's the corner that's closest to you when you're looking at the building. So it's uh, easy to, to draw a building with multiple uh, add-ons, additions, L's, things like that. But to just master the art of drawing a cube first and then we'll be able to do more later. So um, if there's no building in your, and you're wanting to just sit down and draw, just make a vertical line near the center of the horizon, add a little bit below the horizon line, a little bit below so that you can have a, a building that looks more natural. Next. Okay, so this is a drawing I did a long time ago of a building and uh, I added watercolors into it and I used uh, the idea they created note cards at this um, tourist place. So they were selling these paintings, uh, but it's just drawings with watercolor on top of it and they're on cardstock. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, enjoy this idea and art today too. Next. Okay, this is the one I did of my church and it's got a whole lot of additions to the building and this is very complicated to be able to sit down and draw this, but anybody can do it that wants to. It just takes some time, but there's a horizon line, vanishing points, this is two point perspective uh, and uh, you draw it all in pencil and then you can take a Sharpie marker that's ultra fine and draw right on top of that and you have a, a more permanent drawing. So I hope you'll enjoy trying this at home. Uh, I did learn this uh, drawing in perspective when I was 18, a student at, Mer at UT Martin. 
1971-72, and uh, Altie Vandenberg was my professor, and I want to thank her because I've used this all my life. Uh, then uh, I also earned my degree in art from Murray State University and my degrees in horticulture from Murray State University. And I thank University of Kentucky for hiring me as their county agent for horticulture. Uh, the, I wrote the text from memory pretty much uh, and from my classroom notes uh, while I was earning my degrees. And then uh, also from my experience as a professional artist and teacher. Uh, I did some of the drawings myself and some of the photos were taken from uh, public domain. And um, so I hope everybody's encouraged to this. If you want to contact me, uh, the extension office phone number is probably the easiest one for you to remember. I will call you back. The number for our extension office is 270-554-9520. And again, that's McCracken County Extension Service on New Holt Road in Paducah. And that number again, 270-554-9520. Thank you, everybody. If anyone has any questions, if anyone has any questions, now's a good time to ask Kathy. Kathy, I have a quick question. How do you work your planting around this process? Do you uh, pick out particular plants and kind of line those out as you're working with your drawing? Well, if you're, you know, like outdoors and you're looking at the building, you can see how tall the shrubs are and, and replicate that on the drawing. But just using squiggly lines is pretty much an easy way to draw a tree or shrub. Uh, that's where I can add horticulture in if they're drawing it from a, a from just imaginary drawing. Um, and uh, if it wants to be a winter scene, the trees could be deciduous without leaves. If it wants to be a summer drawing, then you would draw it fluffy with the leaves on. So there's there's some ways to, to perk up the building. Uh, uh, the grass could be green in winter. It could be covered with snow. I mean, green in summer could be covered in snow and white in the winter time. It's just uh, more fun to, I hope everybody can be encouraged to try a little art. It's, it, there's no right or wrong. And the first thing to do is have fun doing it and not worry how it looks. Anyone else have a question for Kathy while she's here? Kathy, we appreciate the presentation so much. It makes me want to get my pencil out and my uh, pad of paper and start trying some of these things that we learned today. Thank you. Sorry I started coughing. I got a dry throat for a little while. <laughs> Thank you for having me today. We are glad to have you as our guest. And if anyone has any questions later that you think of, please get in touch with Kathy. She is a wealth of information. We've worked with her for a long time and we appreciate all the ideas that she sends our way to the library. Questions? If we have no more questions, I'm going to let you know about the next program we have coming up. The next, um, the next McLive Live will be, as you can see, we'll have a special guest Mike Gowan from Murray State University, and he's going to be talking about trail hiking and backpacking, so you don't want to miss that. Thank you again, Kathy, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you.